Let me see if I can read this street sign. We can't be too far now. When will you learn you do not pull a blind man? Oh, I I'm awfully sorry, Herr Blucher. Do you mind waiting over here? I'll look around for a taxi. Confound this blasted rain. I think I see one coming now. Uh, there's one. Taxi! Oh, taxi! Stop! Taxi! Taxi! Confound you, taxi! Stop! Taxi! Ah! Yeah!
Sign this, please, Mr. Cover. It is most unfortunate that your introduction to Japan was so unpleasantly begun. But perhaps this is not your first visit to Japan. What are my chances of getting the wallet back? Uh, perhaps you'll get your wallet back, your papers and your passport. Often the thief throws away those things after extracting the money. Uh, you have business in Japan, Mr. Carver? Now, how much you'd call a tourist? Oh, if you would care to offer some further information regarding your activities, perhaps Look it might... Here. You got my name, my hotel, oh. list of stolen property, not even anything else for me to sign? Perhaps. You are adept at karate, Mr. Carver. I'm fair. I'm sure you're being modest. The condition of your hand suggests you're more than a novice. So this guy, what does she go down this? Also, fifth grade, black belt. You are to be congratulated upon achieving so high a degree of proficiency. Thanks, I hear it's tough to make lieutenant too. Look, are we finished now? Of course, after we have satisfied one more annoying formality. We have a great respect for the unusual power of those who have mastered karate, Mr. Carver. So have I. Good, then there's no question that you understand why the Japanese authorities require the registration of the karate hand as they would do with any other lethal weapon. Hi, Haraka this Akira, this is Matthew Carver. Matt? This is wonderful. Why didn't you let us know you were coming? Who are you now? I'm at my hotel. When can I see you? Why, right away, of course. The sooner the better. Matt, I can't even realize it. It's been more than 18 years since we've seen you. Now listen to me. Don't waste another minute. Take a taxi to our home and I'll meet you there. I'll call my father and tell him to expect you. Matt, this will be one of the brightest days in his life. Akira. Yes, Matt? I know Tushko's alive. I want her to be there. Matt. Man, I don't understand. What are you saying? Mister, you stretch that lie over a dozen years, that's all it's good for. Just have her there. Except for the paper money, it seems intact, Mr. Carver. You are most fortunate. It was found in a back seat of a taxi. I bet the driver didn't have the slightest idea who left it. Unfortunately so, but we have got the name of the driver. Oh, that's good. You hold on to it. It's good to be able to get a taxi in a hurry. Look, you said this was intact. Oh, uh, we cannot uh, be sure that you listed everything. Mister, I'm out more than a roll of bills. Uh, this, perhaps? This, perhaps. And this, perhaps? What makes you think that's mine? Uh, since it was found in your wallet, it seems to be a logical conclusion. An interesting coin. How interesting? Thieves steal, Mr. Carver. I have yet to discover one who enriches his victim. I think you have everything now. Oh, you're premature, Mr. Carver. You have forgotten to sign for the return of your property.
Matthew Carver. Don't you usually ask for the names of uninvited visitors, Mr. Carver? Usually they tell me without being asked. Quite. Mabry is my name. Ivan Mabry. Feel free to help yourself to my cigarettes, Mr. Mabry. Thank you. I suppose you're wondering what my business is. You collect American cigarettes? Very <laughs> good. As a matter of fact, I am a collector. I collect coins. Today, I was assured that you were such a source. You make sure the kid that followed me back gets a fair cut. You're a very perceptive man, Mr. Carver. No, your friend didn't employ a very experienced tale. Since you allowed yourself to be followed, can I assume that you're interested in a possible sales contact? No, not necessarily. I just want to see what would happen. You uh, wish to keep the coin? Yeah, why not? I always wanted a hobby. Mr. Garber, I want that coin. I mean to have it. Why don't you go back to your coin dealer? Try to scare you up another one just like it. That's a mistake. Coins are a strange business, Mr. Carver. You know how I got the thing? I'm quite sure I do. Maybe you'd like to talk about it. Uh, that's not in my immediate plans. The coin, please. The desk, please. Put that down. Hello, listen, this is Matthew Carver, room 502. There's a man named Ivan Mabry threatening me with a gun. He's about six feet, eight inches tall, weighs about 320 pounds, probably English. If you hear a shot, will you pick him up in the lobby? I'll hold the phone till he leaves. <laughs> Excellent, Mr. Carver. Excellent. I'll take the whole pack, why don't you? Oh, thank you. We must get together again. It's so refreshing meeting a man with a sense of humor. Hello, operator. Listen, forget about reaching the desk. If it's that busy, I wouldn't want to bother them anyway. Hi, Domo.
My son? How'd I wind up here? No one knows. You are found unconscious, virtually at our doorstep. This is a strange way to return after so many years, my son. <clears throat> I'm all right. Nevertheless, the fact of your return is a cause for great joy. Yeah, I'm pretty knocked out about it myself. Are you in trouble? Akira has told me you spoke strangely to him. It is true. You do not speak as I remember. A lot happens in 18 years, Sensei. Deceit goes a long way toward ruining good memories. You will find no deceit in this house. Oh, it's here. And I'll find it, believe me. All right, now where's Toshko? Toshko died as a casualty of a terrible war. Nobody wants my wallet, they just like to look through it. Here, now tell me Tushko's dead. You have been deceived, but not by me. How did you obtain this photograph? It's minding my own business in the States, and this came in the mail. Who would send you this? Not the slightest idea. Didn't say on the envelope, maybe I still have a friend here. A friend who does not acknowledge himself? No friend sent you this. How would I claim my daughter to be dead if she were not? Look, you know what Tushko and I meant to each other. Don't tell me you liked the idea. You were as close to me as she was close to me. Had you entered into a union so rife with the classical pitfalls, I would have grieved for you both. You were both very young. I wished only for time in which your values and emotions might mature. <laughs> time. Look, you bought yourself 18 years of time, and the price it costs stinks. Tushko is dead. <laughs> Look, you're lying in my face. There are at least a half dozen automobiles in that background. Every one of them was made within the past five years. Here. Here's a 1960 Ford. Why, this picture was taken within the past few months. I only wish I could make you believe my words. You had faith in me once, but now with that picture in your hand, I'm afraid it takes more than my words to convince you. My second daughter was but a child when you saw her last. She has grown into the image of her sister, has she not? You are ill from your experience. Father, he shall not be allowed to work for a little time after his terrible accident. No, no, I'm fine. I'm all right. Since then, I'm sorry. We are all sorry. I thought that no one could live up to the story my father and Akira has told of you. But I am not disappointed. Reiko. You look so much like your sister, so very much. I do, but not quite so much as you think. Years in our memories, no? You have no picture of Tosca all this year? No, no picture. No, in my mind. I left everything dear behind. Perhaps you will find new things. Reiko, who took this picture? 
Ginkgo. Where did this come from? Who took it? I have never seen it. I did not know it had been taken. This is the Ginza. But I was with no one that day. I saw no one. No one I knew. Where did you get it? No doubt it was taken by a mutual acquaintance who wished to surprise Matthew. There are many in Japan who still remember him fondly. We should be grateful that it served to bring him back to us. And now, my car is at your disposal. At least I found your carton of cigarettes. Do they have soap and towels? I trust you arrived at your destination without much delay. You're the one who paid for that taxi ride, huh? You made it necessary. There was, after all, a very good chance you had the coin on your person. Too bad it proved an unfortunate waste. Where is the coin, Mr. Carver? Did you look under the rug? <laughs> You're awfully cocky, considering the untenable position you hold. What do you think would happen if I were to tell the police that the coin was stolen from the body of Otto Blucher? Who was Otto Blucher? You're a difficult man to follow, Carver. I frankly can't quite figure you out. Well, I'll stop asking questions and start giving some answers for a change. Answer me one question, and I may. Mind if I use the phone? Oh, don't worry. You don't need that thing. I'm in the mood to listen. Let me have maintenance, please. This is Carver, room 502. There's a plugged-up sink here. Will you send a plumber up right away, please? Hi, Don Marigato. Go on. I arrived in Japan two days ago with a man named Otto Blucher. He was murdered last night. You make your point. Otto Blucher had been one of those Nazi officials convicted by the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg, Germany in 1946. He escaped hanging but was sentenced to imprisonment for committed war crimes. Blucher was released some four or five years ago. Well, what was your connection? It had been rumored that Blucher had, when Allied occupation appeared imminent, converted his holdings and his thefts into a transferable form, as did many top Nazis. In the specific case of Blucher, it was believed that he knew the location of more than a million dollars worth of pure platinum that had been consigned to a German research project under his jurisdiction. You can understand, of course, how a man such as I would be attracted by this uh, legend. Yeah, I can see that. Thank you. Oh, uh, would you care for one of your cigarettes? Hmm. Now, <clears throat> Blucher suffered from a serious eye condition. A glaucoma, I believe it's called. He was virtually blind at the time I became his confidential secretary and companion. His uh, right hand, so to speak. I learned also that the story of a million-dollar cache of platinum was quite authentic. It had been Blucher's plan to flee Germany and take the fortune with him. His escape had been, however, balked by the swift advance of Allied troops, and he was captured and subsequently imprisoned. In the years following his release, he had managed to recover the metal and had begun arrangements to liquidate his fortune. Negotiations had been carried on with a certain gentleman here in Tokyo, the metal was to be shipped and disposed of here. You figured the coin's a key to it, huh? Unquestionably. Somewhere in Tokyo, at this moment, there is more than a million dollars worth of precious metal awaiting a claimant. It's open. You have broken things? Yes, sir. I come to fix. Very good. See what you can do. I fix. Wouldn't the platinum belong to the West German government? 
I assume the West German government consider it had a claim it had been secreted in that area. But Mr. Carver, finders keepers, losers weavers. Freeze? What's up? You think not to block him? You see, please. Say, neighbor, do you have any change? Yes. Thank you. Try it now. Think of breaking it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. May I see the coin in question now? Well, I know as much about it as you do. But, my boy, you do. Just want to catch me with a coin and then call in the police. Heaven forbid, Mr. Carver. I'm simply interested in becoming wealthy, not in avenging the death of my late employer. Still, maybe there is no platinum. Maybe you rigged the whole story just to get the coin as evidence. Sir, do I appear to be an honest man to you? Not especially. Then you must accept me at face value. You're not a man I would care to cross, Mr. Carver. I've seen evidence of what that hand of yours can do. But you remember that. Please, break sink. Oh, you don't, sir. Sorry, keep the change. Thank you. Do arigato. You're welcome. Do arigato. Do itashimashu. Do arigato. Aye, do itashimashu. But we're partners. And we're going to stay partners. I assure you, so long as that coin stays in your pocket, we're going to be very close partners. Hey, partner, have a drink while I shower and change. Thank you. Take off your shoes. Is this necessary? Would you wear your hat to dinner? Don't be so boorish. That's the way they feel about shoes. Mr. Mayberry, this is Mr. Harakawa. How do you do, sir? How do you do, Mr. Mayberry? How do you do? Looks like the old days, Matt. Doja looks good to you, does it not? Yeah, it looks fine. You almost ready to leave? If you wish, of course. Perhaps Mr. Mayberry would like to be shown around the dojo while I dress. No, he confines his interest to collecting coin. How little you can know about me, Matthew. I'm intrigued by all of this. What precisely is a dojo? Well, this, about you. You would call it a gymnasium. It is our dojo. Are you not familiar with the sport of karate, Mr. Mayberry? I believe I've seen some evidences of its effect. Uh, Matt, you must show him around. I'll be ready by the time you have finished. By all means. Uh, you want him to see it, you show him around. If you wish, you will accompany us. I'm sure he'll be glad to remain with us. Come along, Matthew. Now, these boys are doing what we call randori, freestyle fighting exercises. Are those chaps really hitting each other? Oh, no, of course not. They stop just short of the mark. This in itself teaches perfect coordination between mind and body. Is that so? Uh, perhaps you'd like to see karate used for defense. That should be most interesting. This is karate defense from a sitting position. Tell me, why do they shout? Well, when you shout, you automatically exhale, and exhaling tenses all the muscles. This gives the killing blow more impact. And it also has the effect of freezing your enemy. Oh. How long has all this been going on? Well, the history is most interesting. It began on Okinawa many centuries ago. 
There, the tyrannical Satsuma clan denied the people right to bear arms. They also treated them cruelly. A devastating form of open-hand fighting was of necessity developed. And today, karate, as it has come to be called, has been scientifically perfected. Once he has mastered its principles, a man can call upon each fiber of his body to generate pure physical power of a degree one would not believe possible without the proof of his own eyes. This is a defense against a knife attack. By the way, Mr. Mayberry, the man who is defending is Mr. Nishiyama, one of the top karate experts in the world. He's also chief of the instruction committee of the Japan Karate Association. How long would an actual fight last? Oh, never more than a few seconds, just until the killing blow is landed. Can you still do that, Matt? Yeah, sure, I'm like lightning. <laughs> this is a defense against a pistol attack. Now watch him kick the pistol out of his hand. I say, what are those chaps doing? They're doing kata. Let's go into the dojo and watch. A kata is a series of techniques in a set sequence. This kata is Kanuyu no kata. As you see, these kata include all the various hand and foot techniques as well as body shifting. The colors of those belts have some significance, I presume. Oh, yes. The words of the white belts are just beginners. Mm. Then you go up to green, purple, mm -hmm. brown, and finally to black. The words of the black belts are masters of this art. You wear a black belt, I see. Most of the kata have various techniques of defense and attack very skillfully woven into them. Mr. Harakawa, what are those chappies doing with their fingers extended like this? You'll find that out in just a minute. Okay. A master of karate might be a dangerous man. Well, but so could any man with a pistol, a knife, or any weapon for that matter. Remember, what we practice here is a sport. If a man would kill with karate, he would also kill with any other weapon. Now watch this, Mr. Mayberry. You see, on a fist of this sort, the force is on the whole area. On a hand like this, the same force is on the fingertips, just like the point of a blade. Amazing! I gather this is old stuff to our friend Matthew. There are few as proficient as I remember Matt. My father taught us both. Your father? Yes, Kosako Harakawa. He's one of the men who pioneered karate as a Japanese sport. Today, he's over 60 years of age and still the master of many much younger men. Mm. But Matt, Matt was brilliant. What? You know I'd vouch for him even today. 
As a matter of fact, I'd like to see him in action. Why not, Matt? You seem to be in excellent physical condition. Show your friend. For years, I've boasted about your prowess. Prove me an honest man, will you? No, Akira, please, no. I mean, that's not Thanks. Do you understand what he is saying? Yeah, he's telling him how good I am. Why don't you keep your mouth shut? <laughs> tiles, Mr. Mayberry. Roofing tiles. Oh. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try it, Matt? Come on, try it. Perhaps Matthew prefers uh, softer targets. Fleshier targets. Yeah! They believe it was you, Mayberry. Awfully good, Matthew. You sure haven't lost your touch yet, Matt. I'd say he hasn't lost his touch. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Would you like to try for 14? Yeah! Truly remarkable. Excellent, Mr. Harakar, excellent. Uh, do you mind? Uh, may I? Thank you. Started for me. They want a contest, Matt. What shall I tell them? Tell them no. Do they have a Japanese word for yellow? What shall I tell them, Matt? You might not tell them. Botaksan, Kordeidaro, Kairo. Coming? Yeah, as soon as he's through making excuses for me. Tell them I'll be waiting outside. Uh, please inform Mr. Harakar that his friends will meet him on the street. Boy, I ought to split your gut open. I don't doubt you could. It's only more youthful adversaries you avoid. Boy, I ought to split your gut open. I don't doubt you could. It's only more youthful adversaries you avoid. Do you like your soup? No, I beg your pardon. I say, uh, are you enjoying your soup, Mr. Mayberry? Delicious. It's, uh, simply delicious. I'm glad. Were it but a single week later, you would undoubtedly have missed the snake season. <coughs> Matthew and my brother were raised together. The carvers came here when Matt was only seven. Our families grew to be good close friends. Matt and I grew up together and attended school together. The war must have made it difficult for you. Look, Arakawa-san made my escape possible at the risk of his own life. My parents were less lucky. They were interned. They died in a Japanese prison. Now, what else would you like to know? What is wrong with you, Matt? You're so different. What do you expect? A couple of things happened in 18 years. To me as well. Maybe you were better. No. It is deeper than that. Something has changed you. <laughs> well, now, what a great, big, brilliant statement that is. You know, until I was 19 years old, I'd never seen my own country outside of Hollywood movies or travel folders. Japan was my backyard, and I played with its kids, bowed to its grown-ups, I even loved one of its girls. And then along came a war. And when I met my Japanese brothers, I had to kill them or they'd kill me. I didn't have much time to get to start hating my enemies before I had to start killing them. You know something? I think I killed over 100 men. 
Well, with guns, with knives, but mostly with these. I didn't have time to see if I knew them, played with them, or mothers that patted me on the head, or if maybe one of them was you. It is a tragic thing, but the circumstances of war do not acknowledge the uh, sensitivity of our emotions. Your worlds went different ways. They've come together again. It's all in the past. Oh, no. no it's still right up here. And now you cannot separate the faces of the living from those you have killed. I am sorry, Matt. I think I understand now why you could not oppose me in the dojo. Oh, pardon the intrusion, Mr. Harakawa, but Matthew and I have certain pressing business we must attend to. Your father has graciously made his car available to us. It is getting late, Matthew. Later than you think, friend. Scotch and soda and one uh, cyanide of potassium on the rocks for my friend. This cyanide potassium, American drink, please? Gin and tonic will be good enough. Well, uh, one gin and tonic and one cyanide potassium on the rocks. I ask about the two. No, 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 no. One gin and tonic, one scotch and soda. Just forget about the rest. Very well, sir. Under other circumstances, you could be the life of the party. What, tell me what we're doing here? We make our contacts here, of course. We just sit. For the moment. My dear boy, you have forgotten how to enjoy yourself. Watch the entertainment. This was made with the gin and quinine water. Yes, sir. Is that all right? the gentleman, Matthew. Now, I've got a better idea. Let whoever wants to see us make it a threesome at the table. You will come with me, please. I don't think so. Please, no scenes, Matthew. Your choice is very limited.
You have the coin, Ivan? In his pocket. Give it to me, please. You know, somehow I don't get the feeling I'm an equal partner. <laughs> Give me the coin and we will discuss an equitable arrangement. It's been discussed. Now look, let's all start on an equal basis. I've got the coin. You know how to use it. Before I ante up, I'd like to know how the cards are marked. And I'd also like that monkey to put down his gun. Matthew, please. Uh, this sort of thing upsets me. You must realize that your position is far less strong than it was when the location of the coin was unknown to us. He's quite right. Give me his coin, please. Drop dead. Boris? You know, one more time, and I'm going to lose a deep-rooted inhibition. At this rate, Mr. Carver, I should be forced to relieve you of all your inhibitions. Either you hand us a coin, or we take it from your dead body. The way you took it from Otto Blucher. Goes that name again. Say, look, how do you know that uh, Shorty here didn't kill Blucher? You have the coin. A very forceful argument from my side, Matthew. All right, okay, so I, I give you the coin. What happens then? We trade you a plane ticket home. Oh, sure you will. Here's another thought. Maybe Romer took care of Blucher. Nonsense. For what reason? I don't think he likes partners. I mean, half a million's more than a third, whole million's more than a half. I could put your name right on top of the list below Blue Shirt. Desperate reasoning for a desperate man, Matthew. As Mr. Romer points out, you're the one who had the coin. Well, I tried. Let me put it another way. If Curly wants that coin, he's going to have to take it from my dead body. Maurice!
You rush out. Don't worry. I'm giving, not taking. Here. Do you have a wire recorder? I don't speak English. Wire recorder, are you there? Yes, there is. Go. 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 これは今売り出されているものでは最高級品です。一万サイクルまで録音します。はいはいはい、いいです。はい。私は持ってます。もしもし、原川でございますが、どちら様でございますかあ、ちょっとお待ちくださいませ。先生、お電話でございます。あ,あ、もしもし。あ,あ、わしじゃ。えそのまたどうしたことだうん。うん。それじゃあ、やっぱりそうだったのか。よし、じゃあすぐ行く。急いで車を用意するように。はい。あ、それから、今の電話のこと、誰にも言わないように。Reiko, is Akira there? Oh, it is Akira you called to speak with. Reiko, not now. Reiko, please, not now. You tell me not now, you mean not ever. How bold you make me, Matthew. I will call my brother. I believe he has a return. I came as fast as I could. Mad? You're a mess. What happened to you? Let's get inside. Okay. Come in. Much too busy during the daytime. We'll talk here and then I'll find another place. Right. Now don't turn it on, please. I got some whiskey somewhere. That's no, all right. Matt, what does all this mean? What has happened to you? What have you done? 
Can I use your wire recorder? Sure. Anything on there you need? Just some dictations from today. Nothing that has to be preserved. This will help me make my point. Are you in trouble with the policeman? Well, by now I probably am, unless I pin a few things on. I've known there was something. Yesterday, a man named Otto Blucher was murdered. This was the reason. What can this be worth? More than a million dollars in platinum to anybody who knew or could find out how to use it. Do you know what you're telling me? Mm-hmm. It's not the way it sounds. This thing was planted in my wallet. Somebody had my wallet lifted and planted this coin there just to be sure the police would find it. Then why weren't you arrested? Well, our police didn't know it had been stolen from the body of Otto Blucher. Nobody told them. Then there's no evidence against you. Oh, yeah, there's evidence, all right. Mabry knows about it, and so do a few others, and I bet that right now somebody's waiting to tip off the police until it suits his purpose. And here I am, set up nice and neat and ready to be bowled over. I don't get this, Matt. If someone wished to see you blamed for murder, why would he wait? Well, I was only half used up. Why waste me as the patsy for one killing when I could take the blame for two? Who else was killed? Well, I sort of messed up the schedule on that one. I figure Otto Blucher was murdered because he was one partner too many. Now, that leaves a charmer named Alfred Romer. Everybody's supposed to think that he's about as far up the ladder as this thing goes. If he gets killed, maybe he's stuck with a puzzle he'll never figure out. You can bet that Romer will get it in a way that puts a finger right on top of me. Matt, you've got to go to the police and explain all this. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. I just go to the police and I say, go man aside. Somebody murdered Otto Blucher for a coin worth a million dollars and then turned around and made me a present of it. Of course. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm not thinking. It is not logical that a man would commit murder to gain possession of something and then just give it away. And yet, you claim this is what happened. It makes no sense, Matt. It starts to click into place. Now, let's say there's some information on that wire that I'd just as soon keep Matt, to myself. Got to go to the police next it's simple to erase the sound. You know that. Great idea. Do it for me. What purpose is there to all of this, Matt? Come on, do it for me. On a machine of this type, there's no separate erase control. You uh, simply rewind the wire, set the machine once again in record position, and allow the wire to run through. The previous sounds will be eradicated. All right, that's enough. Play it back, will you? There will be nothing to hear. Well, let's see. Sure. The purpose is there to all of this, man. I didn't turn the oh, volume control down entirely. On a the old sound is replaced by the new. And allow the wire to run through. The previous sounds will be eradicated. <laughs> the drumming of your fingers on the microphone. Your nervousness is a matter of record, Matt. All right, that's enough. Play it back. All right, that's enough. There will be nothing to hear. Let's see. Now let's listen to the next selection. Pretty good way to keep people from reading your notes, huh? But can any information on that wire be worth a man's life, Matt? It's worth my life. You know, we all went wrong in assuming that whoever held this coin held the key to Blucher's hoard. Now it turns out that some smart fellow stole the letter and let the wolves fight over the envelope. He got the information from the wire, erased it, then used the blank spool to make me look like the boy to chase. But you said the sound had been erased. Oh, yeah, the original sound, but, uh... Remember? Little noises can slip through in the process. Now, if you've got any whiskey, you'd better get it. This will be hard to take. 
But, Matt, I don't understand. You just listen. You will. Now, would you please turn on the fan? But, Matt, what? Uh, turn it on. Okay. That's a bad habit you've got. Not turning the volume all the way down when you erase all wire with this thing. One tends to lose awareness of a sound when it's grown used to, Matt. How did you discover it? Comes over your phone like a $10 piano with a 50 cent tuning. <laughs> I thank you for an excellent lesson, Matt. From now on, I shall be more considerate in minor details. Matt. Have you ever stood near more than a million dollars? No, not without a bank vault in the way. All right, come into the warehouse with me. for the Blucher was a genius person as well as a stubborn and untrusting man. His figures were unreasonable. So you decided to erase Blucher along with his figures? It is an exasperating thing, Matt, to know that you have been sent more than a million dollars and yet be unable to avail yourself of it. Would you suspect this of concealing several thousand dollars worth of precious metal? I fooled pretty easy. Aquaregia, a very powerful mixture of acids. Blucher's platinum is dissolved in it, just like I dissolved that coin. Much as you might conceal sugar by melting it in water. Each of the acid carboys here contains a portion of the metal. More than a million dollars worth in all. You do me a favor. Put your arm in and fish some out, will you? Fortunately, its recovery is far less demanding. The information provided by Otto Blucher's recorded notes explicitly details the chemical procedure for recovering the platinum. How does Alfred Romer fit in? They had known each other in Germany. Once they had agreed that the platinum should be transferred to Japan, it became expedient for Romer to utilize the services of such a company as this, both for purposes of receiving and storing the materials as they arrived and for eventual liquidation of the platinum. You can understand that it would be quite difficult to liquidate more than a million dollars in precious metal without certain international contacts and facilities. I bet you've got great contacts. What kind of a discount are you giving on opium these days? I have found to my very good fortune that in such non-competitive areas, it is seldom necessary to discount one's merchandise. Partners are the only serious profit risk. Well, you managed to cut down the risk pretty well. Completely. But don't worry, Matt. You'll get full credit for it. No, no you're, you're, you're counting chickens. Romer was very much alive when I left him. <laughs> but not when I left him. Well, you sure gave it to me. About 400 witnesses seen me make a fast exit from Romer's office with him after me, and then he's found dead in an alley with me on the lam. I bet you were there all the time, hiding under a rock while I was getting slapped around with a 38. You followed us. Of course. Romo wasn't supposed to kill you, Matt. When he lost his temper, I had to, what you'd call, play the whole thing by ear. Fortunately, it worked out. The impression will undoubtedly be that you killed Romo. All right. Now what? And now, Matt, will you at least raise your hand against me? Or must I say your fight? Why are you doing this to me? Uh, I mean, you could, have, you could have picked a dozen others to take your fall. Why me? Killing you is not an expedient, Matt. It's part of my pleasure. Why? Had it not been for you, my sister would be still alive. You're responsible for Toshka's death. You killed her. She carried your child in her body. She died for that. What are you saying, man? You, what are you saying? She carried your child in her body. That night in which my father arranged the escape of you and your parents, she told me. Did you never know how the soldiers learned of the plans, Matt? 
You? Of course. Once I knew of the child, what else could I do? And if only escape for once, if possible, I curse my father for making it be you. Our country's at war. You are child and little body. We were married. Did you know we were married? Did you ask before you started to hate? Did you ask if the dirt was in your mind? I knew. She told me of the marriage. What difference did it make? The shame was worse. She'd conceived in the image of our enemy, not in passion, but with premeditation. What would have happened to our family had she born that child? It would have hanged the Harakawa family. You killed her. You killed her. Didn't you? You killed her. I placed the knife in her hand. She was weak. My strength drove it home. My hand concealed her shame. She would not have had to die, but for you. Ironically, I used her ghost to bring you to Japan, Matt. That ghost has led you to your death. Pick it up and use it to escape from your own dishonor. Liar. Murderer. And you speak of others' dishonor. What greater shame can there be than you have brought to our name? He's been here all along, before I even called you. I asked him to listen. If I'd realized how much he was going to hear, I wouldn't have. It is fitting. To this day, I have not known the truth of my first daughter's death. I did not know she was your wife, Matthew nor of the child. I didn't know there was a baby either. <laughs> Casualty of the war. Was it not so? Details differ. That is all. When the police come, let them find you have sought escape from your dishonor. Let them find your bodies instead. ですね。肩の傷に気をつけるんですよ。はい。お客様のおっしゃったことを忘れないで。サンフランシスコに着いたらすぐ向こうのお客様に見ていただいて、交代を取り替えていただくんですよ。出発するのはまだ無理なんです
excellent argument for socialized medicine, my boy. What? <laughs> How's the shoulder, Matthew? Well, you're still a regular doll, huh? Oh, my, my. Do sit down. How come you're still around? I thought by this time you'd be out uh, scrounging up a new enterprise. Maybe like uh, testing consumer reaction to uh, opium toothpaste? Forgive me, my boy, for waiting the last minute to pay you a visit, but the authorities did, after all, have a firm uh, priority on my company. Oh, when do they hang you? Nonsense. Oh, fortunately, one can be punished only for the crimes one has succeeded in committing. Not for those he has intended to commit. The police were forced to concede that I'm really quite innocent of anything other than withholding evidence. Under the circumstances, they were quite reasonable about that, really. A fortune returned to its rightful place. What a deplorable miscarriage of dishonest effort. Alas, I've come out of the entire affair, no richer and probably no wiser. If only I could learn to profit by experience. Listen, if you get to the States, look me up. Of course, dear boy. Uh, where shall I find you? Well, you look in the phone book. <laughs> Which one? Try them all. I expect to travel a lot. <laughs> Allow me. No, no, I have my cigarettes in there. Oh, Allow me, my dear. The boy is like a son to me. We could take you to where you wish to go, my son. You're not heading in the right direction. Cars, like people, can easily change their directions, Matthew. I'd be very happy to take the flight tickets off your hands, Matthew. At a discount, of course. <laughs> Naturally. Rico, what do you see? A woman who is very much alive, Matt. Well, that's what I have to learn to say. It'll take time. Sensei. An old buddy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Matt. And thank you. Ikimashou.